What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to the Liverpool Tottenham post-match reaction and analysis video where Liverpool have won one of the most dramatic, most insane, absolute madness of a Premier League game. Take that Richard Lisa, you pitchers celebrating Muppet. This is just poetic justice for Richard Lisson, who scored his first Premier League goal, takes off his shirt, celebrates like an absolute idiot, and then a minute later, Tottenham gift Liverpool the winner, the fourth goal, and Liverpool got away with one, big time. The players need to learn from this. You have to kill the game off. After Liverpool were 3-0 up, after 15 minutes, we should have gone for the jugular, like Newcastle United have done. They were 5-0 up after 21 minutes, and Tottenham absolutely collapsed in the first 15 minutes, and Liverpool should have scored another one to make the game safe, but at 3-0, Liverpool players looked like they lost a little bit of concentration, took their foot off the gas, but let me know what is your reaction in the comments below. And after Newcastle and Man United got both victories today, do you think the top four race is over? I think it's not over yet, but Liverpool are very, very unlikely to finish in the top four. It would need, we would need also to win all of our games and we would need either Newcastle or Man United to pretty much collapse in the last few games of the season. I can't see it happening, but stranger things have happened. Yeah, you know, two seasons ago, Liverpool were in a similar position and we got Alisson with a 95th minute winner. Our goalkeeper Alisson scored a winning header against West Brom and then we finished in third place. I don't think history is going to repeat itself. I don't think it will happen. I want Liverpool to finish at least in fifth or sixth place and I think we will fight it out with Brighton on who finishes in fifth place. But Liverpool started the game like a house on fire. Absolutely brilliant cross by Trent Alexander-Arnold. Curtis Jones side foots it home at, at the back post. That's Trent's fifth assist in a row. And if we have a full season where Trent Alexander-Arnold plays in this inverted fullback position where he is basically slotting in and into midfield in attacks, I'm convinced that Trent Alexander-Arnold would break the Premier League assist record, which sits at like 21 or 22 assists. I think Kevin De Bruyne and Mesut Ozil is holding the assist record, but correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure how many assists uh, it would need for Trent to break the assist record, but he already had like seasons where he got 14 or 15 assists. So if he plays a full season in a fully functioning, brilliant Liverpool team, who is to say that he can't get 20, 25 assists uh, in a full season from this position? Curtis Jones also had a brilliant game since he came back from his long injury. He is building his match sharpness up and his momentum and confidence and Curtis Jones looks like a really big talent again. So people who wrote him off, young players, you need to give them time, give them patience and also trust Jurgen Klopp that he can develop and grow and mature and mold these players into big, big talents. And Curtis Jones will be a big player for Liverpool next season. I just hope that he stays fit. And Luis Diaz, his first start in six months. Luis Diaz, his first start since October. And he marked it with a goal, a brilliant assist by Cody Gakpo. And Luis Diaz, fantastic volley, brilliant finish into the near post. And after six minutes, it was 2 near, and I was hoping Liverpool would blitz Tottenham. And um, we, we actually did for the first 15 minutes, because Cody Gakpo then gets fouled by a Tottenham defender. And Mo Salah finally scores a penalty goal this season. That was his third penalty of the season and he scored his first one. It was kind of a panenka. He smashes it into the roof of the net. And I think that was just Salah just wanting to score a goal. He didn't go for precision. He just went down the middle, but into just under the crossbar into the roof of the net. And that's actually the perfect penalty because usually even if the goalkeeper stays in the middle, he usually expects a low shot. And if he dies, dives then either way, then it's a goal. So Mo Salah was also very good. But then Liverpool a little bit lost uh, their footfall in the game. Tottenham grew into the game more and more. And then a defensive uh, like mix-up 
So Harry Kane absolutely wide open in the middle, 39th minute. Uh, Liverpool's uh, defense was completely caught on one side of the pitch. Konate with a couple of bad uh, positioning mistakes before Tottenham's first and second goal. And Harry Kane, I mean Robertson was with Harry Kane and he got dragged towards the ball. He got sucked towards the ball. Instead he should have marked Harry Kane because uh, the other player had a Liverpool defender on him. But Harry Kane is wide open in the middle. Robertson is in no man's land and he side foots it into the net. So 3-1 Tottenham at half time, 3-1 Liverpool at half time. Tottenham were in the game. But Jurgen Klopp had to say to the Liverpool players, you should go on the front foot. And the worrying thing is, Liverpool had three shots on target in the first half. We scored from all three. And then we didn't have a shot on target until the 95th minute, until Diogo Jota's winner. So between the 15th minute and the 96th or 95th minute, Liverpool didn't hit the target. And that's very, very concerning. And also Tottenham hit the post twice through Hongmin Son and I think Romero was the other player who hit the post in like two or three minutes. Liverpool's defense was so, so shaky and the midfield as well was very shaky. So Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp tried to make uh, tactical changes. Henderson came on for Harvey Elliott, but I don't think Henderson was particularly good either. And, uh, you know, Diogo Jota came on and James Milner came on. But uh, Liverpool, again, caught napping a little bit at the back. Uh, Konate tries to play offside, but there were other Liverpool players deeper. So Hongwinson is onside. He goes through, he slots it home, 3-2. And then we had a very, very nervy last 10-15 minutes. And Liverpool actually defended pretty well until the 92nd minute, where James Miner, in the, in the midfield area, where there is no danger, he flies into Harry Kane, too eager, too over, like hot-headed, I think. James Miner, who is actually the most experienced player, he should have been the calmest on the pitch, but he just wanted to stop Harry Kane at all costs, uh, even though he had his back to the goal. He, there wasn't any immediate threat, immediate danger to Liverpool goal. So James Miner probably lost his cool a little bit. He flies into Harry Kane, gives away a needless free kick. But before that, uh, also Mo Salah was clearly pulled back by Davis and fouled. Mo Salah doesn't get the free kick and Jurgen Klopp goes absolutely apoplectic on the touchline. He collapsed on the ground. I was, I was waiting for him to tear his hair out. He was almost punching the ground. He was so mad, so angry because so many times Salah keeps getting fouled and the referee keeps ignoring the, those fouls. And I mean, I didn't expect anything from Paul Tierney, anything else, because he is blatantly biased against Liverpool. He has a grudge against Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool. He absolutely hates Liverpool with all his beings. And how can Paul Tierney referee seven games for Liverpool? The average for a, a Premier League referee is two or three Liverpool games per season or two or three games refereeing the same team per season. So it's absolutely unacceptable that Paul Tierney is getting so many Liverpool games to referee because he tried everything to ruin Liverpool's day today. And of course, Liverpool didn't uh, defend the free kick properly. Richarlison heads it down into the ground. He loops over Alisson and into the top corner. Richarlison goes mad. The Tottenham fans go mad. And it's absolute poetic justice for Richarlison, you know, fouling and, uh, and also injuring Thiago in that uh, Merseyside derby where also Pickford broke Van Dijk's season. He broke Van Dijk's knee and Pickford didn't get sent off for that. And that ruined Virgil van Dijk's uh, season and Liverpool's season as well, two seasons ago. Anytime Richarlison gets done over, I'm celebrating it. No matter what game it is, but especially now that it's uh, against Liverpool. Of course, former Everton player coming back to Anfield, scoring the equaliser. He takes his shirt off, celebrates his ridiculous, dumb-ass pigeon dance. Uh, like, uh, there, there, there has been so many memes mocking that celebration. It's one of the dumbest, most, most pathetic celebrations. And then, just to make it just absolutely brilliant, poetic justice, Lucas Moura, after a long goal kick from Alisson, long kick forward, Lucas Moura tries to be too clever. 
He passes it backwards towards his own centre-back, but he overhits the pass and it's a perfect assist for Diogo Jota, who takes a brilliant first touch and watch Diogo Jota's first shot, touch. If it's too short, he has the ball under his fo foot, he can't score. If it's too long, the defender gets there, he can't score or he is, the angle is too tight. Diogo Jota's first touch is just perfect because then with his second touch, he can drill a low, hard rocket of a shot into the far corner and it's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant winner and then he does that playstation celebration i absolutely love diogo jota and boy do did we miss his goals and now liverpool are above tottenham above aston villa who both lost today and yes brighton won a six nil yesterday in an absolutely brilliant win but then brighton play manchester united so on paper if brighton win all of their games of course then brighton will finish fifth Liverpool could finish sixth. I don't think it's a massive difference because both uh, positions qualify for the Europa League Greece stage. But I want Liverpool to finish as high as possible. But we need, I think, probably Man United to lose to Brighton for us to get any, to have any chance for of a top four finish. Man United are still like uh, seven points ahead of Liverpool with a game in hand. Newcastle played the same amount of games and they are nine points ahead. And I don't see Newcastle losing three games um, in the last five, especially because they lost four games all season. Same with Man United, they would need to lose three games and draw another one for Liverpool to have a chance uh, to finish out of them. And I mean, in six games, that's, uh, that, that is a lot. So I think it's done. The top four is pretty much done. What Liverpool need to do is try to cut out these defensive mistakes and these defensive lapses of concentration and thank goodness we can learn from this game while we still got the three points. I want Liverpool to finish as high as possible, probably fifth place is the highest that Liverpool can finish now and with the pretty much we don't deserve top four after losing to so many of the relegation candidates, so many of the bottom half of the teams. Liverpool dropped so many points against them. I mean, we lost to Leeds United at Anfield. We lost to Burnham of away home for Formula 1. We lost to Wolves. Um, and no disrespect to those teams, to Nottingham Forest. Uh, those teams are relegation candidate teams or fighting against relegation. If Liverpool have those nine points, just uh, count the Burnham of Leeds and Nottingham Forest results. That's just freezing the results. If Liverpool had nine points more, we would have the top four race well and truly on. We could finish in the top four still. But yeah, let me know. What do you think? Uh, I think um, Liverpool still need um, to have a great summer because the midfield looks sometimes like it's not there. Teams can just run through the midfield. And also the defense is a worry that even with Konate, Van Dijk and Robertson and Trent, defensively we are not good enough this season. And Alisson also made some crucial saves in this game. On another day, with better finishing, Tottenham could have won this game. Even with us scoring four goals, Tottenham could have scored five or six as well. That's the real worrying thing about this. And this is not a great Tottenham team. It's one of the worst Tottenham teams of the last few years. But yeah, let me know how do you see it in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.